Hi, this is Sangwa Oh at UIUC, and in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to give you a brief overview of my recent study. Before I start my presentation today, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to the Global Convergence Contents Research Center at Sungyungan University. It is great honor to have this opportunity that I present this study at the conference. For overall, this study examined if social media would be associated with public's belief and misbelief about human papillomavirus vaccination and how these beliefs are associated with the public support for the vaccination-related policies. In particular, this study also explored whether trust in institutions would moderate the association between social media exposure and policy support through those beliefs. To give you a brief context of the study, let me a little bit talk about HPV vaccines first. HPV is the abbreviation for human papillomavirus, which is a common sexually transmitted infection causing 90% of anal and cervical cancers, 50% and more vaginal vulva benign cancers. HPV vaccine is uh, was first licensed to prevent HPV-related diseases in 2006. Since then, more than 66 countries have introduced the vaccine in their countries to increase the vaccine uptake with the goal to prevent fatal cancers caused by HPV. For vaccines generally, the coverage rates are influenced by the policies which make it easier or harder to access vaccines. That is, implementing a mandatory program of HPV vaccination can be the first step to increase the vaccine uptake. However, despite the potential of the vaccine in preventing fatal cancers, there have been controversies surrounding the vaccination. Some of the most prevalent issues include concerns about increasing adolescents' active sexual behaviors as well as increasing their unprotected sex. Parents are worried that their children can become promiscuous after they get vaccinated. Such misbeliefs are called it as the risk compensation theory. Even if such misbelief is not supported by scientific evidence, it has hindered the rollout HPV national immunization program in many countries. South Korea is one of the countries where a mandatory vaccination program is currently only for young girls. While South Korea began the discussion about including young boys for the mandatory program, the country has not yet established that policy. Then how do people develop such misbelief in the first place? Where do people find information regarding the vaccination? As social media is considered one of the most significant factors shaping people's views about health policies in recent years, the goal of this study was to investigate how social media use would affect the public's views about the vaccination policy in South Korea. The problem was that misinformation about sexual disinhibition might be prevalent in social media, which might shape misbelief concerning the vaccination program and thus impedes an extensive implementation of the mandatory vaccination program. However, Little research has been conducted to examine how the vaccination information exposure via social media is linked to the public's policy support for mandating the vaccination. Therefore, the goal of this study was to explore how exposure to the vaccination-related information on social media would be associated with support for expanding the mandatory HPV vaccination program to include boys through the framework of the health belief model. Before I talk about the health belief model, let me introduce the concept of misbelief first. There are two types of misbelief. Those resulting from a breakdown in the normal functioning of a belief formation system, such as delusions, and those arising in the normal course of the system's operations, such as misbelief, based on incomplete or inaccurate information. In our study, we examined the latter type of misbelief, and it refers to 
a first belief or at least a belief that is not correct in all particulars. In this regard, while a correct belief can be defined as a belief that is based on accurate information, a misbelief is a belief that is developed based on inaccurate information or misinformation. Then what is misinformation? Let's think about it in the health communication context. Misinformation has been defined as any messages that can be al altered sorry, by best available evidence from scientific research or expert opinions regarding a health issue. This definition excludes information that is reputed, unverified, unclear, or contradictory. While ambiguity concerning relatively under-researched diseases inevitably results in producing new evidence, and thus expert consensus can be subject to vary. In the context of health issues that have well established with scientific evidence and studies, the scientific evidence and expert consensus can draw a sharp dividing line between accurate and inaccurate information concerning the health issues. In such a case, public health organizations such as the WHO or CDC often function as expert groups that provide a clear guideline to determine the veracity of information. For example, the WHO and the CDC have published statements regarding the benefits of HPV vaccines, such as having the vaccination can prevent sexually transmitted diseases or having the vaccination can prevent cervical cancer. Further, extent scientific research on the effect of vaccination provides clear boundaries between accurate and inaccurate information concerning sexual disinhibition. Let me take an example. The statements having the vaccination leads to unprotected sexual behaviors or having the vaccination leads to earlier sexual behaviors is all incorrect information. To explore the mechanism through which social media exposure is linked to pilot support, the health belief model provides valuable insight. The model proposes that perceived beliefs significantly influence behavioral health outcomes. According to the model, that is, people will not engage in health behaviors unless they perceive the behavior as beneficial to reduce the threat. Perceived benefits and beliefs in the efficacy of the suggested behaviors to lessen the risk. In this light, considering the relatively clear distinction between accurate and inaccurate information related to HPV vaccines, correct beliefs in this study can be defined as perceived benefits in the model regarding the value or usefulness of the vaccines in preventing HPV-related diseases, which are developed based on accurate information. In contrast, perceived barriers may function as obstacles to undertaking advised actions. Perceived barriers in the model are defined as beliefs about the tangible and psychological cost of, of the advised action. And misinformation has been referred as one of main causes to produce perceived barriers that impede health behaviors. The concern of sexual inhibition accordingly can be defined as a perceived barrier that is developed it from exposure to misinformation, which hampers the expansion of the existing HPV policy to include boys in South Korea. Some scholars have proposed that perceived benefits can be one way in which media effects increase public health policies. This study suggested that correct beliefs about HPV vaccination could constitute a social media effect on vaccination-related policy support. We also assumed that the opposite would be also true of the association of social media exposure with policy support through misbeliefs. Further, this study investigated the moderating role of public trust in organizations responsible for monitoring the HPV vaccine's safety and effectiveness. As concerns grow about the spread of health misinformation through social media, scholars have worked it to find an effective way to counteract the negative consequences of misinformation. 
However, most of the studies in the health communication field have focused on how to correct misinformation afterwards and found that correcting misinformation is neither easy nor effective. Scholars have suggested that this difficulty might be because misinformation is not an isolated failure of individual cognition that can be corrected with appropriate communication tools. Rather, misinformation needs to be understood as a result of societal megatrends. Our study was an initial attempt to understand the effects of misinformation in the larger social context in which it unfolds by looking into the role of trust. Trust has been studied as a key factor to influence public support for health-related policies, particularly when people are uncertain about risks concerning those health and health scientific issues. Due to the complexity and uncertainty involved in such emerging or controversial health and scientific issues as genetically modified foods, nanotechnology, e-cigarettes, and newly produced vaccines, Ordinary citizens often struggle to acquire enough knowledge or ability to assess the potential risks related to the issues. For instance, government agencies as regulatory bodies have responsibility to oversee potential threats to public safety, health, and well-being. Therefore, people with greater trust in government agencies tend to perceive less risk related to the issues as they believe that the agencies will protect them from potential harms. Public trust also operates as a simple heuristic that helps citizens decide whether to support or oppose certain policies. Ordinary people tend to rely on trust in policymakers, producers, and providers such as government agencies, pharmaceutical companies, and hospitals to make a risk-benefit based decisions about vaccination due to the complexity of accurately evaluating the safety and efficacy of vaccines. In sum, guided by the HBM and previous literature, we assumed that social media exposure would affect beliefs and misbeliefs about HPV vaccination and beliefs would increase people's support for the vaccine-related policy. In contrast, misbelief would decrease people's support for the policy. Further, we assumed that social media information exposure would increase policy support via belief and decrease it via misbelief. We also explored if institutional trust would have a reinforcing effect and a buffering effect. We conducted an online survey in South Korea in 2017. South Korea first introduced its national HPV vaccination program in July 2016. Through this program, girls between 12 to 13 can get vaccinated against the HPV for free. However, the program was only given to girls not to boys. We thought that this unique context provided us with a good opportunity to examine our hypothesis. Our sample was a total of 1,025 individuals. For the preliminary analysis, we used SPSS 27 to examine uh, the hypothesized relationships proposed in the study. Past analysis was employed using M plus seven. This figure is the findings of past analysis. As you can see here, social media exposure was positively related to only misbelief. Misbelief was then negatively related to public support for expanding the vaccination program. Findings showed that correct beliefs were positively associated with policy support, suggesting the importance of shaping correcting belief about the benefits of the vaccination to secure policy support for expanding the mandatory vaccination program. In terms of indirect path, the pathway from social media exposure to policy support through misbeliefs was statistically significant, indicating that people with greater social media exposure to HPV vaccine-related information were more likely than others to have greater misbeliefs which in turn were less likely to support expanding the mandatory vaccination program. 
To investigate the moderating role of trust, we conducted a multi-group analysis. This figure shows how our findings. To run the analysis, the median of trust was used to divide the total sample into two, two groups. Low trust group whose score was lower than the median, which was a total of 412, and those whose score was higher than the median was labeled as high trust group, which was a total of 613. Estimates for high trust group as shown above, followed by estimates for low trust group shown below in the figure. As you can see here, that that indirect path from social media exposure to policy support through misbelief was statistically significant only for low trust group, indicating that individuals with low levels of trust were more vulnerable to misinformation on social media and in turn less likely to support the vaccination policy than their counterparts were. Wrapping up this presentation, I want to talk a little bit about some uh, main findings and limitations of our study. As is true for many social issues, sustainable measures for public health problems might be more effective if they took place at the policy level. Without policy support, it's impossible to pursue health policy solutions as people are more and more likely to receive important health information via social media, the media operate in both private and public places to shape people's views for key public health policies. In this regard, understanding the public's response to social media health information is imperative for successful legislation for health policies. Our analysis indicate that exposure to HPV vaccination information on social media is potentially harmful in shaping public opinions toward the policies for the mandatory program. The findings suggest that social media exposure may undermine support for expanding mandatory vaccination programs, particularly among people with low levels of institutional trust than their counterparts. Our finding about the significant role of trust is particularly worthwhile because it indicates that uh, exposure to accurate information alone might not necessarily shape accurate beliefs about vaccination. Where trust is absent, merely providing accurate information may not be an effective risk communication strategy. The findings point out that acceptance of misinformation and its adverse consequences might be dependent on a contextual factor, such as institutional trust, in which misinformation is received and interpreted. Therefore, this study suggests the importance of building trust in institutions responsible for managing a given health issue as an effective solution to combat misinformation on social media and its negative outcomes. There are some limitations as well. Since we use the cross-sectional data, it may be difficult to establish the causal relationship as proposed in the study for sure. For future research, by using an experiment or longitudinal design, it can be better demonstrating the causal direction hypothesized in this study. Another shortcoming is that we measured social media exposure with a single item. A single measure of social media may not completely capture its effect because social media can take various types. Further, people's social media behaviors are not limited to being exposure to information. People are so actively seeking information as well as sharing it. The different communication behaviors on social media may result in different outcomes. In future study, measuring social media in a more comprehensive way will better demonstrate the effect of social media. We also want to suggest that future research will need to use more comprehensive items to measure beliefs and misbeliefs about HPV vaccination. For example, some of the most prevalent misinformation related to vaccination is that the vaccine is not effective or has adverse effects. In terms of the role of trust, this study only measured one dimension of trust, inequality. This is about the extent to which an organization fairly treats an issue. 
It has been suggested that trust is rather a multifaceted concept. There might be other aspects of trust, such as dependency or competency. Measuring more complete aspects of trust can provide us a better understanding about the role of trust. Despite the limitations, this study is an initial work to explore the role of trust can play in counteracting the adverse effect of misinformation in the post-truth era. The role of institutional trust has been studied primarily in the risk communication literature. This study is an exploratory work to look into if and how misinformation can be understood as a result of societal megatrends by examining the role of institutional trust in the context of HPV vaccination. Further, the concepts of beliefs and misbeliefs have not been explicitly distinguished, either conceptually or operationally. Guided by the HBM, this study attempted to investigate them respectively in the effect of social media use on health prevention. This is all I have today. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me.